Hello, I'm FUX Toy Cats, and have you ever been walking down a village pathway when all of a sudden it's intersected by a ravine? This is a very rare thing that is very cool to look at, but imagine if that same village had the same pathway, except it led in a different direction and that intersected with a second ravine. That would just be incredible, right? Except imagine if you bridged across that ravine and you went a tiny bit further in the same direction and then you found this absolute mess of a structure. It is an incredible sight to behold, and in today's Seed Sunday, I intend to fulfill the mission statement of showing you seeds that are particularly interesting and worth checking out in some way, but we need to jump straight into how you get this to happen in your very real world. So let's show you that now. This is the very seed. If you type this into your Minecraft world generator on the Bedrock Edition, obviously seeds are the same but different between Bedrock and Java. So uh, if you type that into any Minecraft Edition, um, then you'll be able to get this particular world. Also, I want to point out, uh, I would li I usually like to find credit for seeds, but in this case, the closest thing I can say is it came from somewhere on the Minecraft subreddit. So uh, just keep that in mind. This is a very popular seed that has shown up recently, and I want to show you a lot of weird things about it, because if you do type that in, you'll find a spawn that looks entirely normal. In fact, you might even question if you've typed in the right thing or not, because it looks like a perfectly normal seed, except for a few things being very slightly off that most people won't even notice. Those things would be the trees, which you can see over here are generating the exact same distance apart every single chunk, huh? Something is very weird about that, huh? And then also, if we go a little bit to the south, you might notice that the water lakes uh, are repeating in the exact same fashion as well, with even the exact same, uh, you know, like kind of uh, you know pattern off it. Uh, it's very weird, very uh, you know different, but mostly you wouldn't notice something is wrong until you go very far in the direction of the swamp to the south. Once you find yourself at these coordinates of about minus 600, minus 600, you'll find that there is a river that is very weird because there's little holes on both sides of it rather than real terrain. If you look off to the left of that river, you see this, which is already intense. It is a bigger hole that is meant to generate in Minecraft. There is no structure that looks like this by itself. I mean, you can obviously work out what's happened, but uh, you know, it's, it looks very bizarre. But this is even more interesting and clearly shows what is happening. Uh, right here, you can see ravine after ravine after ravine after ravine is generating in the exact same pattern, infinitely repeating along the diagonal axis of, uh, you know, in case you're curious, it's across the negative Z, positive X axis. To show you that more clearly, let's go above. So here you can see each of the ravines is exactly the same, except they've gone to the right by 16 blocks and up by 16 blocks. The significance of that is a chunk. Every single chunk is starting a brand new ravine, and then those ravines, because they're wide enough at their base, just make a continuous flow of lava that looks like this. And as long as there's no uh, water, i.e. rivers or oceans, uh, then these uh, ravines can go on endlessly in this same direction. And the crazy thing about this is it's not just ravines which are repeating endlessly. Any single uh, terrain detail, which is covered by the terrain code, um, will repeat endlessly on this seed. So um, although that doesn't include things like villages and abandoned mine shafts, sometimes these things will interact in super interesting ways, like right here. Look at this abandoned mine shaft. This is nothing like you can expect to see on any other seed because this isn't how they're meant to generate. I mean, look at this thing. It's entirely out in the open. What a bizarre experience. I think this would be a fascinating thing to play in survival, right? But it's not just ravines which are deciding to duplicate endlessly. You'll also find that any tree generation that uses the seed as a basis will also duplicate endlessly. Look at this swamp right here and you'll see that the same three trees are duplicating over and over and over again. Super interesting in my opinion. Um, take a look at the uh, you know, terrain just a little bit to the south of that ravine mess and you'll see that this little water lake right here, which is part of the uh, world generator code, um, has the exact same issue where it duplicates every single chunk, 16 blocks uh, in the positive um, X and 16 blocks in the negative Z axis will create another uh, lake which looks exactly the same. Sometimes there's terrain above them which is different and doesn't use that, but basically everything duplicates. But why does everything duplicate? What is it that could possibly cause this to generate in Minecraft? And not only to generate for a few hundred blocks, but it generates for thousands of blocks in a row. And the simple answer to that question, oh, by the way, other things that are covered include things like ores. Did you know there's four blocks of iron here? So there'll be four blocks of iron over here and four blocks of iron over here endlessly, in case you don't get the point. Same with the gold ore, which is right over there. Notice how there's gold ore right over there and gold ore right over there. And there's even, my, my, my most fascinating one is this piece of redstone right over there. As you can see, duplicates over and over and over again. 
super interesting to look at. This piece of redstone right here too, the very, it's it's impossible to get right at the edge. It will duplicate endlessly, which is great. Also, if you want to get yourself some, uh, you know, you want to get yourself some blue, uh, you know, some lapis, you can get that endlessly. And in case that's not interesting enough for you, every single other detail from the coal ore to the granite and the andesite patches will duplicate, uh, you know, between chunks. Here you can see the granite is infinitely gettable in the same place. So you can mine pretty much any in, uh, resource infinitely, even the ones that you should have to go out looking for, like iron or whatever else, uh, can be found in infinite abundance, which is really great in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, let's go for a little fly along this as we explain exactly what's happening here in super basic terms, because although I do want to focus at least a little bit on the fact that this seed is interesting, this seed is an example of something that duplicates, we have spoken about infinitely repeating seeds before, and I've shown off a little bit of how this works before, so let's briefly just mention that when you load up a Minecraft seed, that seed is used to work out where exactly things should generate. The reason that every time you load up a seed it's exactly the same is because Minecraft is generating the game from scratch, but it's using the same decision-making algorithm. Uh, if a seed says that there should be a ravine in a certain chunk, then it will spit out yes for this chunk, but no for most other chunks. You know, every single chunk that loads in, it's working out. Should we generate a ravine? Should we generate with coal ore? Should we generate with, uh, you know, an abandoned mine shop, etc.? And it's getting an answer for yes or no. And the exact same, uh, you know, uh, engine runs all of the terrain, uh, which is wood, uh, you know, trees and stuff, lakes, as well as ravines. And for this seed, the exact same answer is spit out chunk after chunk after chunk. When the game uses the seed and tries to work out, should we generate a ravine in this chunk? The answer is yes. And then when we go 16 blocks to the right and 16 blocks up, or in other words, 16 blocks on the positive x axis and, uh, you know, negative 16 blocks on the z axis, what happens is it asks the same question and it gets the same answer. And this will repeat endlessly. We ask the same question Should we generate a ravine? Yes. Should we generate a ravine? Yes. Should we generate a ravine over here too? Yes, we should. And as long as it is physically possible to generate that ravine, it will do so. You can see how it's cut off by places where it physically is not meant to because of the other world features which generated first, but that is how it works out. Should it generate a ravine? And the exact same thing can be applied to when it is in, say, a forest biome. It wants to know where to generate the trees. Should we generate a birch tree over here? The answer is yes. Then we go 16 blocks. Should we generate a birch tree over here? Yes, we should. 16 more blocks. Should we generate a birch tree over here? Here? Yes, we should. Also, you might notice that there's a, there's a water lake generating right next to it, which has the exact same, should we generate granite right here? Yes, we should. Should we generate granite right here? Oh, let's dig down because it looks like it hasn't, except wait a minute, they decided we should. Although no granite, which is bizarre. But you can see how the water patch has generated here regardless, even though it's generating below terrain. Um, and that is exactly how this happens. Every single feature that is covered by the small world bit generator will duplicate endlessly as long as conditions allow it. And that is how you get this absurd thing right here. And although we could talk about the broken seed all day, um, to me, the interesting thing is not just the technical side of things, because it's kind of been solved. In Minecraft, um, with enough time, you can find things that will break every aspect of the seed generating engine. Uh, because the equations weren't foolproof. There's going to be a few things that get through. Um, you know, there are hundreds of seeds in Minecraft Java that have this same problem of infinitely repeating mine shafts or anything like that. Uh, you can find uh, anything infinitely repeating if, uh, you know, there are provisions that don't stop them from doing so. And as you can see, bedrock mine shafts, uh, you know, bedrock ravines don't have a provision stopping them from generating like this. <laughs> I mean, look at this insanity. It just goes on and on and on. And it's crazy and fascinating. Um, but it's not just this one series of my, uh, you know, this one series of ravines. It's everything else in the world. What you can learn from this is not just, uh, you know, oh yeah, sometimes you can make things duplicate endlessly, but instead it teaches you how Minecraft's terrain works. As you can see, the ravines are still generating right here, but the ravines are cutting off so that they don't go through the river and the river doesn't flow through here. And that is really great to look at. You can see how it makes this super interesting shaped ravine where it's kind of a square almost because of the river that's following it. Again, it tries its very hardest not to cut through rivers, although it does make a few mistakes here and there. For the most part, it follows that pretty successfully. But by using this infinite ravine seed, we can actually find some of the bugs in Minecraft's terrain generation, such as the fact that the gravel, which is part of the gravel mountain biome, which, you know, I'm not not a fan of this. We can maybe get rid of this if we're doing a caves and cliffs update anyway, perhaps. But um, it shows you how, for instance, there is a bunch of gravel, which, uh, you know, is able to generate even when there are no blocks below it. This is a huge hit for Minecraft's performance because do you know what we get to do? This is my favorite thing to do. If you break a single one of these blocks, it starts a chain reaction. Oh, pretty sad chain reaction. It starts a chain reaction that will start to slow down not only my game, but also my recording. I'm pretty sure. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, it is beautiful to look at 
but that is a serious performance hit. That is a bug in Minecraft's generation. And yeah, you better believe it's happened uh, more than a second here. The same exact flaw happens with the ruined portals. Although this is perhaps a bug and a bug. There was a bunch of gravel there and this generated on top of the gravel. However, now we have a floating ruined portal above a ravine. Is that cool or is that uh, a bug, you tell me. But, um, you know, the fact that this can happen is something we can realize from this. We can see not just the fact that this seed breaks Minecraft, but as a result of this seed breaking Minecraft so much and generating so many ravines, we can see these weird edge cases of, oh yeah, it turns out gravel doesn't look if there's a block below it before it generates um, when there is a ravine in the ca- Oh, crap. <laughs> you know, I like slideshow Minecraft. What about you? But, you know, the fact that gravel, uh, you know, doesn't check if there's a ravine below it before generating is a serious concern. I mean, we can see this all over. It's not just in that one place. And uh, even though it's fascinating to look at, that is an objective bug. This is Minecraft being broken. The fact that ravines will cut off several blocks before hitting, uh, you know, like, say, a lake um, is kind of a bizarre bug. It seems as though the ravine could go further, but for some reason it's not going to. But yet that same ravine will go right next to a river, or in this case, as you can see, it's expanded in a weird way you wouldn't expect. That is super interesting. Um, the way caves generate and can sometimes make these infinite recursive loops um, is an interesting thing exposed by this infinite repeating uh, kind of structure. Basically, we can see how Minecraft fundamentally works in a lot of ways, um, and we can also see what counts as a small structure to the game's code. Do cacti count as small structures? No, they do not. But what does count as a small structure is the lava pit, which, as we all know, can generate uh, with sand above it. Perhaps you could call that another floor. I mean, it's a little bit of a mean trap, but I, I kind of like it. I, I wouldn't call this a bug, but it definitely is Minecraft. Probably not doing something intended. It's definitely like uh, they left it in the game because it's fun, right? But um, another fascinating thing about the deserts, which uh, will duplicate because of this world code, is the desert well. As you can see, desert wells are considered a small structure. I don't know why. They're such a great part of Minecraft's history. I mean, look at this thing. You ever want water in a desert and you just don't know where you're going to find it? I have this issue all the time and I love that this well exists and it's kind of OP that they can generate every single chunk because again, same well generator asking, should a desert temple generate here? And the answer is yes. So we go 16 blocks and it has the exact same answer. Yeah, to generate a desert well. Another 16 blocks, generate a desert well. Why not? Another 16 blocks. Yeah, go on. You know, have another desert well. Unless the conditions don't precipitate it, as in the case of this river, but another 16 blocks and there's more. And uh, yeah, it's super bizarre to look at. Anything you want to look at in the seed is going to duplicate endlessly, including caves in the nether will repeat endlessly too. So at these coordinates on this seed, as you can see, endless nether cave. You can literally fly forever to the end of the world, which is fascinating. Interestingly, you can see the nether gold ore and the nether quartz is repeating as well. So here is some nether gold ore, here is some nether quartz, here's some magma, and if we go 16 more blocks, never gold ore, never quartz, never magma. And you can probably get the idea that no matter which biome we're going through, unless something else generates and breaks through the path, we're going to find those things infinitely. Interestingly, since I made my last video, they seem to have removed ancient debris as being, you know, generated by the world seed, which is super interesting. So as you can see, uh, this is an ancient debris. But if we go 16 blocks where we should expect to find some, or into, indeed, if we just kind of continuously go, we won't, won't find more. Actually, let's have a better example. Here is some ancient debris, three pieces of it. You would expect previously to find those three in a 16 block uh, you know, uh, difference every single time. But no, if we go in this direction, we're gonna find different amounts in different structures. Actually, wait, there's the same one, but one more time. But we're not gonna find it again, I don't believe, based on my previous checking. Actually, wait, no, we are finding it again. Huh, yeah, here it is one more time. Wait, let's, let's be extra sure that this is in fact repeating. I stand corrected. It seems as though ancient debris does still generate as a function of the seed, although, it seems not to work all the time based on the testing that I've done. But you know, the fact that it either, you know, happens at all, kind of crazy. Infinite ancient debris on this seed without having to go through the normal uh, checking stuff. Also, um, any cave that you want to find, same stuff where it just generates infinitely. So if you can find a place in this cave with easy access, you don't even have to go mining particularly far. You just have to break the same point in a cave to find it. This is also how end islands will generate. So if you come out here to the end, you'll see how the small end islands count as a structure and therefore duplicate endlessly along that same positive X, negative Z axis or positive Z, negative X axis. 
whichever way you want to see it. Um, but you're going to see how that happens in the exact same way. Super fascinating. Uh, but in the case of this seat, I mean, oh man, like just, <laughs> isn't it bizarre to look at just to see these infinite rows of uh, end islands that will keep generating as long as there is space. Because again, this teaches you another core tenet of Minecraft um, that the end islands will only generate when there is a certain distance between them and the mainland. There's no good reason there couldn't be an island here, except for the fact that they want to keep a distance between it and one of these giant islands. Um, so looking at this, you can see how Minecraft is broken, but also how Minecraft is designed to prevent it from breaking. When you go along this line, you'll see how most of these islands look exactly the same, and they generate in this straight line until they don't. Again, this distance over here, where you'd expect to see one, there isn't because there is a certain safe distance between big islands and uh, the small ones. Kind of interesting in my opinion. And uh, let's go back to the uh, your big ravine for a little bit. Because if we go back to this same river, you'll see the exact same effect where if you want to go the opposite way, you can. And you can see how the trees are duplicating. You can see how everything's duplicating. But also that same ravine will keep on going on this way as well, even going across some witches' huts and a few other super weird things. Um, but yeah, I wanted to uh, look at this because this is what you can learn from Minecraft. You can see what is, uh, you know, like functional and what isn't, what is generating as expected and what apparently isn't. Huh, I, it seems we've broken another thing right here. Um, but like the endless void of lava is so fascinating to fly through, I, I guess, until you can't. <laughs> Okay, we fixed that issue, but you can see how flying through here, you see how everything's the same until it's not. And that thing that's not is the interesting bit. Like this entire chunk that has been preserved, presumably because of the fact that there's a lake here. Although even then you can see how it's cut off the lake in a weird way where for some reason all of this is seen as buffer distance, but also they cut off the weird wrong part of the lake. There is a broken part of the, you know, the generation algorithm trying to work out how to keep lakes contained that didn't work right here. That is super interesting to look at, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, this, uh, you know, kind of using a bug to work out where the other bugs are, using a floor to work out how other things are. Look, same, same thing here. It tried to generate about the river flowing down, and yet there's the river flowing down anyway, because it doesn't care. And I think what would be so interesting is just to fly endlessly down here and see all the things that we find. It's just an endless lava ravine because each of the ravines has waterfalls and lava in the exact same place. And it just so happens that as a result, you get this endless stream of lava that is, uh, you know, just compelling to look at in its own way. But I think it'd be interesting to see how many thousand blocks we can just follow the lava um, ravine and see if we find any more interesting things. Because even after a few thousand blocks, we learned about um, how villages generate right next to it because they don't notice uh, where it's at. I mean, Look at right here, for instance. You can see there's an abandoned village. Uh, here's, here's where we started this very video. Um, the fact that you can see in both directions just a whole host of things. The fact that you can see uh, the fact that gravel will generate even when there's no mountain below it. Huge Minecraft bug. I think it'd be interesting to see what happens if we just follow this for enough thousands of blocks. Can we follow it all the way to the end, which does eventually happen, by the way? Uh, that's something I'd like to find out. And you know what? Let's live stream it. Let's do the usual live stream thing where we hang out. We do a thing, but also we can, you know, hang out and talk about some stuff. I think it's a lot of fun to do that. And if you'd like to join me on my endless uh, ravine journey, you can totally do so. It's free to watch the stream. Although, feel free to tip question mark. Are you meant to say that? No, you're not meant to say that. But uh, yeah, if you want to uh, come support the stream, come watch it. It'd be appreciated. If you want to talk in chat, you can do that too. And if you want to super chat, that's, you know, actually, I, I don't, you, sh you should use stream apps. But that's that's a whole point about streaming for another time. Um, for now, thank you for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you t later today. Yeah, let's do it like super soon because I want to, I want to see. This is like, isn't this, isn't this bizarre? Just look at the height this ravine is getting right here. But yeah, join me later today for a mega ravine stream. Okay, thank you for watching. Goodbye. I think I found a bug because I just loaded up a nether portal in the end and it took me to 30,000 blocks in the air.